Well, if you want to, go ahead and turn uh, to Matthew chapter 6. I'll give you a heads up. Matthew chapter 6. And then if you want to put your thumb there or finger there and then turn to Exodus uh, chapter 14. Those are our two passages primary that we're going to be looking at today. Now, last week, if you remember, and if you weren't here and you want to go watch it online, I'd encourage you to do so. But we looked at some key components of God's provision related to the story of Abraham and Isaac, particularly when God provided the ram at the top of the hill for the sacrifice. And it was upon that that um, Abraham declared that area Jireh. And talked about how God was Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. And the key components that we looked at, and this is going to play out even in today's message, the passage of scripture we're going to look at, and then I'll even relay it to something personal that we've got going on in all of our lives at the moment. But But the three areas of God's timing with his provision, God has perfect timing. He, time is not in the same category with God that it is with us. You know, we, we have a dependency upon certain parameters as it relates to time. And yet God, he is the beginning, he is the end. And alpha and omega, you know, time is not a constraining factor for God. He is not limited by time. He is the author, amen. He is the one who created all things. And so... This concept of his provision, there are moments whenever it's in his timing that we have to trust. Um, on a personal level, there's during the time of provision and even in the waiting, as we sang about earlier, recognizing that there's lots of times he's trying to teach us a lesson. And so the importance of having an ear and a heart to wait, an ear to hear, to say, okay, God, what lesson possibly are you trying to teach me in this moment and i said a lot of times we struggle we have a tendency to want to get ahead of god because the provision hasn't come and in so doing god by his grace many times will even grant us or let us have what we're wanting but guess what we just missed we might have just missed the very lesson that he wanted to teach us through that process and so the challenge for us and the important thing for us to continually have an ear bent to the Holy Spirit and saying, God, is, is now the moment? Is now the time? Is this what you want to move forward with? How does this work? The third aspect, after we recognize that he might be teaching us a lesson, is realizing that he has a purpose and a plan that surpasses our little world. You know, so many people live in their world and everybody else is just a player in it. Recognize that God is God over the entire universe and he has a purpose and a plan. And yes, he cares about what's happening in each of our individual lives, but recognize his world doesn't revolve around our world, right? We are a part of what he is doing. And so to recognize that in his provision, that he has purposes, he has plans that he is going to fulfill. He's going to accomplish what he sets out to do. Now, whether we're a part of that process or not, in large part, is contingent upon our obedience to what he is directing us to do. Amen? So he, he's going to keep going forward. Now, the application there, and I mentioned it, God is quietly arranging things behind the scenes as we talked about Abraham and Isaac last week. And we talked about it, even saying about it, even when I don't see what you're doing, even when I don't hear what you're doing, you know, you're moving. God is doing things. And so he's quietly arranging things behind the scenes so so that they will be in just the right place at just the right time when we need them. Why does he do that? I'll tell you why, because he's the one worthy of glory. He's the one worthy of honor. If it's all up to us and our own strength to make it always work without dependency upon him, guess what? Who gets the glory in that situation, right? 
We want God to get the glory, and he is so creative. I'm going to get to that here in a second. He can do so many more things in the short amount of time what, what would take us forever to do on our own because he's just that good. Today I want to focus again our attention on how he provides Now, obviously, when we talk about provisions, it's easy for our minds to think about the tangibles, to think about provisions in terms of like what we eat, what we what we wear, um, you know, the things that we obtain, the things that we have, shelter, those kinds of things. And they are important. We would all agree. Aren't you glad we're all wearing clothes in here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Right. So we we we're thankful we are thankful for that. We're not that kind of church. We're, we're, we're who we are. So provisions in the tangible, for sure, are important. But God, he even knew our tendencies as man to worry about those things. And he has something to say about that. And that's where we're going to look in Matthew chapter 6. Last, last week I shared uh, the scripture, Philippians 4.19. You don't have to turn there. Uh, But it just simply is this. It says this, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so, you know, again, a promise. And that was Paul addressing the Philippians. And again, he was talking about how his needs were being made, getting taken care of. And he was expressing that to, hey, your needs will be supplied according to God's riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so we use that kind of as our foundation. And any time you're wondering, man, God, am I going to have my needs met? Remember that scripture, that it's not in your own strength. It's not in your own ability to supply for your needs, but it's in his glory in Christ Jesus that our needs are supplied. So Matthew chapter 6, again, because Jesus knew that we as mankind have a tendency to worry and and be concerned about the tangibles, he had something to say about that. In verse 25 of chapter 6, Jesus is talking here and he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Think about that. By worrying, can you add an hour to your life? No. Can we have concerns? Can we pray for those that are sick, maybe on their deathbed? By all means, but it's a difference of worrying and being anxious about that versus stepping into those situations with faith in Christ and saying, God, we need you to intervene. Demonstrate your power, God. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. Whatever the outcome is, God, we give you praise. Right? Not... One hour can be added to life because of worry. Continuing on, verse 28 says, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. This is key here, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I can't tell you how many times in prayer with our family or whatever, 
and even, even here, I pray, I'm like, God, it's this moment, right here, right now, that you're blessing with us, us with. We don't know about tomorrow. We can plan about tomorrow. We can make good preparation and decisions anticipating what's to come. But let's not get in that worry mindset. Let's not get anxious about tomorrow. Where does our trust rest? It rest, rests in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Almighty God, right? The Lord supplies abundantly. He knows our needs. So a quick application for you and real practical. Just this is the way you live it out, okay? When you find yourself worried about daily physical needs, the tangibles, We've all been there, right? Can we all raise our hand? We have those moments where we have, I don't know how I'm going to get food today or food this week or, you know, pay the rent or here's the direction. When you find yourself worried about these daily physical needs, stop. Just stop. Stop what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, stop. Stop it. (laughs) Right? I even have it written here, red. See, you see it? Stop. Red letters. Stop. So many times we're go, 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 and we're trying to figure it out on our own. And and, and in America, we have a tendency to pull this credit card and pull that credit card and go get this loan and go get that. You know, how we, we don't just stop. Harmony, have I made it clear? Stop. Okay. Stop. Okay. So just stop for a moment. It says it right here, it says, but seek first his kingdom. What does that mean? That means pray. Pray. Maybe it's a husband-wife decision that needs to be made. Stop. Get a hold of your husband or your wife. Come together. Maybe it's something with your child. Get your son, get your daughter, come together. And pray. Seek first his kingdom. We're going to say how he provides. We stop. We come together. We seek his kingdom first. And we pray. I mean pray. Like seriously. Like like do it. Like don't just say I'm going to pray. Don't just wish. And don't just give the little icon praying. Stop. Come together and pray. And it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out, major prayer, you know, thus thou, holy, you know, uh, sincere, from the heart. Come together and pray. And then wait and watch the provision. Wait and watch. See what God does sometimes God will then give you direction it's like okay I was just waiting for you to give me opportunity to this is what you need to do (laughs) and sometimes it'll be a little drop in your mind I never thought of it that way or it might be something in his word he might give you a clear direct he might give you a scripture pull it out of the depths of your heart and say remember the scripture oh that's how this could apply Stop long enough to watch his provision come to pass and wait for his direction. Watch him deliver. He is much more faithful and sufficient than the pizza delivery guy, right? I mean, God will deliver on time. It might not be when we want it right then and there in our want, but he's possibly teaching us a lesson He desires to meet our needs. He's not desiring for us to scramble and to struggle and to be poor spirited. He wants us to recognize his lordship. Right? It does say blessed are the poor in spirit, but that doesn't mean that we approach life from a poor mindset and say, you know what? I'm worthy of being just poor all the time and I'm never going to gain ground. I'm never going to achieve. No, with God. All things are possible. 
and he desires the more. He desires to pour out his blessings and his giftings so that we then can be used by him in the greater capacity to influence more people for his kingdom. He is doing a work. Okay, another thing real quick. Turn to Exodus 14. We're going to keep track in here. Okay. God is so creative. I know we've heard this story. We're going to read it in quick. Um, but can you imagine Moses with God's people behind him as they're exiting Egypt? They've, they've gotten the freedom from Pharaoh at this point to be able to leave. And now they're being chased. Pharaoh changed his mind. That happened quite often. And they're being chased by Pharaoh and his army, and they're moving forward, and they come up to the Red Sea. God is so creative in his provision in making ways where there seems to be no way, right? And so if we look at Exodus 14, let me get there real quick. Verse 5, I'm going to read this as quick as I can. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. Now, we, we've read this story, right? Many of us, we know this story. Think about that for a second. That was an investment that Pharaoh just made that decision. Quick, don't make quick decisions. <laughs> but, but Pharaoh made a quick decision. He took 600 of his chariots, best chariots, and all the other chariots. That would have taken a little while to get that all together, right? I mean, we have quick technology communication. But somehow, he did it. He got it all together to go after uh, the Israelites, Verse 8, it says, The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. Remember what I said, how God has a purpose and a plan? We don't always understand everything that God is doing and why he's doing it. But that's what's beautiful. He's God. We're not. So he can do what he wants to do. So he hardened Pharaoh's heart for a purpose. Verse 9, the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near that word, pi Haharoth, opposite of Baal Ziphom. As, uh, we're just going to go with that. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Now watch the Israelites' response, right? Imagine being Moses, the leader, and here's the Israelites' response to what they're visibly watching in the circumstances existing. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Love this. Verse 13. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Wait a minute. That sounds like something I said earlier. To stop. Right? Pray. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. See, again, there's a purpose. There's a reason in what God is doing. Whenever it naturally looked like God was not providing... 
The murmuring started happening. The worrying started happening. The fear started happening. That's our tendencies. That's what we do as humans. We, we, that's where we go. That's where our world goes. Guess what? Even in this example, God stopped him for a moment. Moses heard from God further direction on what needed to happen. Notice how Moses didn't cave to the people in their murmuring, in their fear. He said, no, today you will watch what God is going to do and you will be delivered. So he spoke it out and then they moved forward and God gave them a, a really weird direction. I mean, is it everyday occurrence to take a rod and a staff and stick it in the water and boom, the water spl- not normal. I mean, they had seen some pretty interesting things, and they're going to be seeing even greater things here to come. But in that moment, that was not standard procedure. Right? And yet, that's how God made a way where there seemed to be no way. And we know the story. The waters parted. The Israelites got safely across. And the moment that Moses stepped out, the waters came, and the The army, the Egyptian army came through, the waters came back over, and the army drowned. And it was then understood what the fear of the Lord truly meant. And it was a testimony, and God received the glory because of what took place in the provision of making a way where there seemed to be no way. So, again, we see timing We see a teaching of a lesson. Moses had opportunity right then and there. He could have tried to make something happen in his own strength, but no, he obeyed the direction of the Lord, and he learned a lesson from that. And then God fulfilled a purpose, which then brought glory back to his name for his namesake. There are many times he makes a way where there seems to be no way. I was, uh, thought as I was preparing this message last week, I, I was reminded of this story. I'll try to make it quick. And I thought about sharing it last week, but then the Lord held, held off. And so then this week, it was like, this is the time. But how many of y'all remember that song, um, God Will Make a Way, right? I'm just going to we'll just sing it real quick. I was told recently that people remember songs better than my sermons. So... <laughs> So here we go. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength. For each new day, he will make a way, he will make a way. So, I remember that song as a kid growing up, and I'll share this story quickly. I was about Harmony's age, 12, 13, when I went on a missions trip down to Mexico, Monterey. And so there was two vanfuls of teenagers. We had a sister church down there that we were doing missions work with. And we had drawn, we have driven, this was uh, in Temple, Texas. And so the distance from there to the, to the border was considerably a lot more than even here. And so, you know, a bunch of teenagers and some chaperones, some, some adults from the church. Anyways, we had made the trip down there, got to the border, um, Thought, thought I had all the paperwork necessary with birth certificate and so forth that it was required. Well, everybody's ready to go through, and of course this was many, many years ago, not the current scenario per se at the border that we currently have. But uh, we're getting ready now. We're at the border, ready to go through the, the gate into Mexico, and the authorities are notifying our team leaders that this guy right here is not going to be able to go. And, of course, we're like, what? And they said, his paperwork's not sound. It's a copy of his birth certificate, not the original. And so there was some small, minute detail 
that they were holding up the process of letting me go through. And of course, I'm a teenager, and I'm thinking about all the natural things. You mean, oh man, I, I don't want to hold this back from being able to go forward. I felt guilty. I felt bad. I was embarrassed, right? The, and, and yet, I was like, does that mean I'm not going to have to go all the way back home to get what I need? And the, I mean, it was just like, what's going to happen? And one of the ladies in the group started singing that song, and we huddled up. We just started singing, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. And so we just started singing that as a group. And natural or otherwise, I don't know what transpired, but God did move upon the heart of the person in authority to go ahead and let us go through. And as a young person, that was a moment in my life to where I saw God provide a way where there seemed to be no way because it was one of those moments. I shouldn't have been able to get in based on what was required, yet by the grace of God, I was able to get through. And so, you know, that was a pivotal moment, again, of trusting in Him, not getting worried, not fear. Not anxiety, but just saying, okay, God, you've, you've brought us this far for a reason. And I, if you ever want to sit down and talk with me about that missions trip, it was powerful. It was something life-changing. Not just for me, even though it definitely ministered to me, but, but the, the church and the situation, it's just, it was just very amazing what God did throughout that time. Uh, but he makes a way where there seems to be no way, Right. So let's finish out. I want to look at um, Psalm uh, 145. And then I'll finish out the, uh, the takeaway thought for us. Psalm 145. This is so good. Psalm 145 is so encouraging. And uh, of course, it's uh, by David, King David. Psalm 145, and I'm going to read down probably, well, a good bit of it. Before I read that, I want to say this. 17, it says this. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. That's a good one to put to memory. If you want to just let that soak, if if that's your homework this week, put that one to memory. That God is righteous. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and he is faithful in all he does. So we're going to back it up to verse 1. I'll try to read through this quickly. It says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. Remember, we, we sang that song, your praise ever be on my lips, constantly praising the Lord. And extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all his promises, and faithful in all he does. We're almost there. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. This is 15 and 16, talking about provision. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Verse 17, our concluding verse, it says, The Lord is righteous 
in all his ways and is faithful in all he does. Woo! I think David got it right. What do you think? Praising God, extolling God about his works, all of his acts of who he is, his goodness, his provision, that it carries on to generation to generation. It's what we speak of. It's constantly upon our lips, right? The one thing I truly want us to remember from this message is this. That our pursuit of the provider is not solely motivated by what he can provide. I'm going to say that again. Our pursuit of the provider, God, is not solely motivated by what he can provide. He is gracious to still provide, even when our focus is mostly on the provision. But oh, how much sweeter and richer is our relationship with God when it is the relationship we value and we pursue. And the provision comes as a byproduct of that relationship, right? The provision is the fruit of, It comes out of the abundance of who he is in relationship with us. That's what we go after. We go after him. We don't go after what's being provided. We don't look to what's being provided. We look to the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to him in our relationship and we pursue the more of who he is. And out of the abundance of of who he is, our needs are met. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? So value the process, the timing, the lesson he's teaching, and recognize that he is fulfilling his purposes through his provision. Amen? This is how our God provides. Let's let's stand... We were going to sing Waymaker one more time, but for the sake of time, uh, we're, we're just going to go ahead and, and come on in and let's just pray. And uh, that is such a powerful song, rightfully chosen for today. Uh, and so I encourage you to go back and listen to that and just let the Spirit minister to your heart through that song. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You do make a way many times where there seems to be no way. You are the promise keeper. You are the miracle worker. And God, even in this situation and what we read through Scripture and time and time again of how you have provided for your people, Lord, it builds our faith. We better understand that you also desire to provide for our every need. But God, we're not seeking after the provision, Lord. We are seeking after you first. And Lord, we are thankful. We thank you just as Teresa prayed earlier and others have been praying. Lord, you are expanding our tent. You are moving the tent peg, so to speak, as we move into the transition into the new building. Lord, we didn't rush into this. Lord, we stopped. We've been praying. We've been waiting. And we're learning lessons through the process. And now, God, you are providing. You are making a way. And so, God, we anticipate the more that you have and the more that you want to do through uh, our church for our community. So, Lord, I pray blessings over each and every one, God. I pray that you would continue just to speak your word, even deposit that song in our hearts so that throughout this week, that when we're in a place of wondering if, if the next need that we have will be provided for, that, God, we will remember this message and we will remember that you are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. And so, God, I thank you in advance, and we give you full glory, full honor for your provision in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.